do is just have a look at him. And just look at him like this and just go back to what you're doing. Cool. Everybody ready? Yes. Alright. Take one. Action. Today we are doing a video breakdown of a recent commercial that we shot for Logic. Check this out. overall theme and story of this commercial was we have a high school athlete that really works extremely hard to be the best that he can and he has seen some success but he is really struggling to get the right eyes on him so he can have a chance at going to the next level. A lot of kids, especially public high school athletes, come from very small school with not that great of coaches or whatever that may be but they're extremely talented but they cannot get their name out there and and what this app seeks to do, and the reason why we made this commercial, is to bridge that gap. And it gives you unbiased and subjective ways to track the stats and the raw ability of an athlete. So when college recruiters come into this one app, that they can trust that the stats are correct and accurate. There's no faking or exaggerating stats. So my friend, Jackie, he full on let me get 100% creative control. He trusted us to deliver a project and a product that we all would be um, very satisfied with. So before we go deeper in explaining why I shot this, what gear I use, and the pre-production process, and the editing and color grading tips, let's give the video a watch, shall we? Every kid has an enemy. You were once this kid. Hardworking, coachable, and gifted. Craving for an opportunity. Okay, breakfast. An opportunity to finally be seen. An opportunity to show them what you've got. Visible. But sometimes that's not enough. What if I told you that something could have changed it all? How would life have turned out? It's not just for keeping stats, it's for creating opportunity. That's logic. You know, you have those moments on shoot day that you're like, man, like, I don't know how we're gonna put this together or this is not working out. I never felt that way for this half of the shoot. I mean, everyone was spot on. Everyone was moving in unison and the lighting setups that we did was working. The contrast ratio was dialed in to a T and it really just came out very beautiful. But when I got that footage back home, there was absolutely no sound coming from the external recorder we only had the sound coming from the red just straight in camera audio from the red and that's all we had to do to drive this scene and make it come alive and that was no one's fault but mine my friend clay asked me hey how are the levels here 
I looked at the audio recorder and I saw that it was recording, but for somehow, it, I just, I guess we didn't get it. So shit happens. Our main actor ended up getting COVID and was in a lot of pain during the workout scenes and the locker room scenes. So we decided to uh, cancel for the rest of the day. I had personal plans to fly to Bali, Indonesia, which is where I am now. I was in Bali for the entire time that the second half of the commercial was being shot. And it was shot by my intern, Jake Lemon, who at the time just started with us, I think two or three months before this. And I believe this was his first project shooting on a cinema camera. So shout out to you, Jake. You did a fantastic job. But with that being said, pre-production had to be anal. We mapped out every scene. We mapped out every lighting setup. We went over lines. With our actors and we had talks for up to two weeks before we even had the camera set up and able to press record. My scriptwriter Levi Ringo did an absolutely incredible job at writing the overall theme and drive for this story. It got me in the right ballpark creatively that took the focus off of the story and, and really kind of kept me creative and on track which made my job way easier in the post-production room. I'm gonna link the script that I had done for this project down below in the, in the description. You guys can have a look at it, but um, first, let's talk about my least favorite thing to talk about, and that's gear. We are inside of a high school locker room, and um, as I arrived on location, the problems that I saw with this specific set was we were getting a lot of steel from outside. So what I did was climb on top of the lockers and threw up duvetine over the windows so that we can control the contrast ratio. This is what it looks like from this angle. Today is a two cam setup. So the first eight cam will be shot on the Royal Gemini. The second cam, we're running the Black Magic Pocket. And for my lenses, I'm using a DIY anamorphic bill that I personally built myself as a test, but as a backup, just in case it doesn't work out. We're using the DZO's 35 millimeter, 50, and 80. I mean, and seven, excuse me, they don't have any. We have the Aperture Nova, and to bring up the overall ambient of the whole room. That's why I use this at 5600 uh, color temperature at 100%. Blasting towards the ceiling, bouncing nice, nice soft light. Nice top down soft, nice soft light on my subjects. Here we have the haze machine. This is just to bring some atmosphere to the whole entire locker room, soften the image just the right way, and make it everything look beautiful and tie everything together. Room tone for audio work, so. To just bring another element to our set, give, that, give our image some more depth, we have chosen to use a 600D to punch through the window, give a little splash on our back wall, and we also did the same thing with the 300D. We try to get that close to a spot where our subject will be sitting, just to bring some more pop of light to our overall image. Now, quick shout out to Lens Rentals. Thank you guys for, you know, the rentals for today's commercial. I cannot be more grateful to you all. For the second half of the commercial, we shot with the Sigma 18 to 35 1.8. It's probably my all-time favorite lens. We kept the lighting all from Aperture. We mainly use Aperture 300D, a 600D, and we use a Aperture Nova P300C. Uh, for the workout scene, we use old school Quasar um, tube lights rigged up with uh, some gaff tape. A couple of the shots, you can actually see it in the frame, which is gave it like a nice little look. That scene was probably my favorite. For the audio, we use a Sennheiser MKH416 up on a boom pole. Um, and we ran that audio into a Mitz Pre 3. For the last shot in the commercial, we used a Mavic 3 Pro. I really want to talk about this creative decision that I decided to go on during the shoot. And that was to turn my shutter speed from the 180 degree shutter rule to 90 degrees. This made his workout scenes uh, seem more chaotic. It gave that the scene more motion 
blur. I know that's kind of really technical, but it makes your image look like really jittery. What's that movie? Uh, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, so uh, the, the opening scene for Saving Private Ryan, where it's like no motion blur and it just feels uneasy and chaotic. I really took this technique from that scene in that movie and I highly recommend doing that because it really makes you feel uneasy. Like something is off that you're looking at this. A couple of editing tips that I wanted to leave you guys with. In this commercial, we used a technique called cut on impact and match cutting. When we were switching between the weightlifting scene and the field scenes, we tried to keep the same framing and switch in between those. Another example of match cutting is when the mother walks out of the frame, you can see our subject, Yui, stare at the camera. And then that net scene inside the car, we kept that same kind of framing of him turned towards Lauren. An opportunity to show them what you've got. Another match cut that was a personal favorite was the hug at the end. So it hugged in the kitchen and then the next hug was on the college campus. It really made switching in between scenes really seamless. And I, I urge you to try it on your next edit. Another cut that was probably really subtle was, you know, when Yui looked inside of the mail dots, the next scene, it transitions up to us back inside the house with the papers being slapped on the table as a transition between your scenes that's not enough that was intentional and i feel like that really helps keeps the pacing natural so i urge you guys to try that on your next project it really worked here especially not dealing with the best audio <laughs> okay so let's talk about my favorite subject and that's color grading I color graded this whole commercial with Juan Malera's, I think that's how you pronounce it, Juan Malera's um, Film Unlimited Power Grade. And for the daylight scenes, I use his 250D. And for the bedroom scene and for maybe the kitchen scene, I used his 500T. Let's quickly go over how exactly I used his power grades to give this commercial that look. One of the main things I like about Juan Malera's power grade is his exposure and camera balance adjustments are made in linear gamma space, uh, which is a more accurate way to adjust exposure and color cast on your image. You do that by only using the gain wheel to make your adjustments. If I wanted to brighten my overall image, if I were to go from one to two, that is exactly one stop of light. And if I go up another half, it's another one stop of light. It's a way to photometrically adjust your exposure. And if you want to adjust for the color cast, I use my gain wheel and just make small and slight adjustments. In most of my ways of adjusting color cast, I look at the scan and make sure I adjust it around that. If I look at my vector scope, I can see that his skin is falling right on the skin tone flesh line, which is this white line right here. If you are not seeing this white line, click on these three dots and select show skin tone indicator right here. Once I made those adjustments, I like to come down to this adjustment layer right here and press option P or alt P on the windows. This is where I'll shape the light in my image with vignettes and power windows, dialing in my contrast a little bit more and giving some more separation from my subject in the scene. The one tip I have with using power windows is wherever I would put negative fill on set, I put a power window to react in that same way. So I start off with a linear gradient and on this bottom left of the screen, I'm going to drag it out right here. And if you press shift H, you can see a highlight mode that shows you where your adjustments are being applied. And then I go to my curves. I make sure I select the Y and I just drag it down ever so slightly. This is how that looks. The next thing I like to do is select my subject's face. I do that by using a circular power window, and then I make sure it's as soft as I can get it. I'll track this. So after I'm done tracking the window on his face, I right click this node right here, and I select add outside node. And with this outside node is when I will give this image just a little bit of blue, just a little bit. And with the node that has the power window on his face, I just give it a little bit of warmth. Here's how that looks. For the last thing, 
I go through and then I put a little look on it with using my curves. So I go up in the blue channel on my shadows. I go down a little bit in my highlights. I switch over to the green. Usually I, I like to go half the distance as I went with my blues, just to add a little bit more green into the shadows. And I go half down on this one as well. And I switch over to my reds. I take the reds out of the shadows, therefore adding cyan. And this I go by eye. I just keep going until I get to a point where that looks about right. And I add some reds in my highlights. Yeah, so now let's look at that. Notice the color separation. That is pretty much it with this clip. Here's how this overall clip looks. Okay guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video breakdown. Let's open up the comment section for discussion. What did you mostly enjoy about this video breakdown? That gives me the proper feedback so I can keep giving you guys value and really producing content that you guys are interested in. That's it for today. Stay tuned for the next video. But until then, stay creative, keep creating, and stay resilient.